Hi, in this video we'll be going through the steps to calibrate your mic on Windows. So there are three different types of setup that you can use based on the equipment you have and we're going to go through the steps to calibrate each of these setups separately in this video. So the first one we'll take a look at is if you're using your own mic with an audio interface that comes with its own dedicated ASIO drivers. So for example we have a Focusrite interface here and a Shure SM58. The second setup we'll take a look at is if you're using the WSB mic connected directly to your computer. And the third one we'll take a look at is if you're using a mic that doesn't come with an audio interface. So for example, we have a Blue Yeti here, or if your interface requires you to use ASIO for all. Each section will be time stamped in the description of this video, so you can skip ahead to the relevant part depending on your setup. But to start with, let's take a look at calibrating your mic using an audio interface. The advantage of using an audio interface is that most come with their own dedicated ASIO drivers which handle audio. So for this setup, make sure you have your interface's dedicated drivers installed, and you can find this on the manufacturer's website. If your audio interface asks you to use ASIO for All, you can skip to the last section of this video where we discuss using ASIO for All with your own mic. But once you have your mic and the interface set up with its drivers, we can start the calibration process. So here as we're using our own microphone, I'll click I want to use my own microphone, and take me to calibration. So here you'll also see that we recommend using a dynamic mic with an external audio interface. So condenser mics will work, but dynamic mics will be a lot more accurate. So here we're using the SM58, which I mentioned earlier. We'll press continue. The first section is where we'll select the interface we're using and the input that our mic is connected to. So I'll select Focusrite ASIO, and in the top right, I'll select input one, which is the input that our SM58 is connected to. Make sure that the level meter on the right-hand side moves with the input. So I'll just do a test here. Da, 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 da. So we see there's input. So if for any reason you still can't see input, make sure your mic is connected to the correct input on your interface, and this is the one that you've selected in this drop-down menu. If it's still not working after this, you can try adjusting the other options on the right-hand side, but ideally we want to keep the sample rate at 44100 and our buffer size up 1 to 8. But once that's done, we can now move to the next step of the calibration process. So here in this next step is where we'll set the input gain. So here we want to make sure that we're singing into the mic at a normal, comfortable level, and we want the VU meter to fall in this range here. So if I sing into the mic, da, 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 you see it's saying a little too loud, so I can adjust the input gain on the interface. So I'm just going to lower the input gain here. Da, 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 da. And now we're in that level. So once that's done, we can continue to the third and final step. And in this final step, we're going to hold some notes in the area on the pitch wheel until the bar is full. Da, 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 da. So now that's done, our mic is now calibrated. So once our mic's calibrated, we can open up a profile and at the bottom here, you'll see an option for inbuilt audio. So in order to hear audio in the app, we can head to the audio device settings via the cog in the top right and select the interface as the output. So the input device is what we set as Focusrite ASIO and the output device is automatically set to the same one. So below that, there are also the options to adjust the sample rate and buffer size. So we recommend keeping the sample rate at 44100 and only adjusting if for any reason the in-app audio isn't working. It's also important to note that if you do increase the sample rate, then Dubler's overall performance will decrease because our machine learning algorithms are listening at 44100. As mentioned previously, we also want to keep the buffer size at 1 to 8 samples or below in order to keep our latency low. And if we do increase the buffer size higher than 256, we'll likely add some very notable latency. But once our sample rate and buffer size is there, we can close the audio device settings, and within App Audio 1, we can now hear audio in Dubler. You can turn this off at any point by clicking on the inbuilt audio button here, and this won't affect the audio from your door at all. So that's how to calibrate your mic and interface with Doubler 2, but if you want to find out more including how to configure Doubler with your specific door, make sure to check out the videos on our Learn Doubler page. So now we're going to take a look at using the Doubler mic with Windows. So the advantage of using the Doubler mic is that it's already calibrated and there are no additional steps required at the beginning to get going with your door. So once you open up Doubler, you can simply connect the mic via USB, and you can dive straight into a profile. Once that's done, you can make sure that MIDI out is enabled, and then you can set it up with your door as normal. If you want to find out guides on how to configure Doubler with your specific DAW, make sure to check out our videos on our Learn Doubler page. However, if we want to use the audio in Doubler 2, as well as the audio in our door, then we need to make sure that we have our audio drivers configured correctly. 
First, we'll take a look at the setup if you're using an audio interface as your output. You want to make sure that your interface has its own dedicated drivers installed and you'll be able to find these on the manufacturer's website. But once that's done, back in Doubler 2, we can head to the audio device settings in the top right. So here in the audio device settings, we can select the output that we want to use for the inbuilt audio. So here for the output device, I'll select our Focusrite USB ASIO. Below that, there are also options to adjust the sample rate and the buffer size, but we strongly recommend keeping the sample rate at 44100 and only adjusting if for any reason the in-app audio isn't working. It's also important to note that if you do increase the sample rate, then Doubler's overall performance will decrease because our machine learning algorithms are listening at 44100. We also then want to keep the buffer size at 1 to 8 samples or below in order to keep the latency low. Any buffer size higher than 256 is likely going to add some very notable latency. If you want to turn this off, you can do so at any point by clicking the button here, and this won't interfere with the audio from your door in any way. So now we can take a look at the setup if you're using the doubler mic, but you're not using an audio interface as your output. We strongly recommend using an audio interface with a dedicated ASIO driver for a seamless experience, but if this isn't available, we can use ASIO for All. It's worth noting that although ASIO for All will work, it will require some effort to set up correctly and will limit audio output to one application at a time. Windows' own audio drivers can't handle low latency performance, so ASIO for All is a free driver that we can use in place of this. If you need, you can find our specific setup guide on how to download ASIO for All on our Learn Doubler page, but once we have ASIO for All installed, this is what we'll be using as our output, whilst we're using the Doubler mic as our input. So as mentioned, due to the way that Windows reads audio and ASIO for All setup, only one program can use it as an output at a time. So that means we can either hear audio from our DAW or Doubler 2, but not both at the same time. However, they can be switched around relatively easily based on what you want to hear audio from. So if you don't want to hear audio in Doubler 2 and you only want audio from your DAW, we can simply head to the audio device settings in the top right and select None as our output device. So once I've hit None, Doubler 2 is no longer using ASIO for All, and in our DAW we can have that set up as usual with our desired output. If we do want to hear audio in Doubler 2, we can either make sure that the DAW is closed and then again head to the audio device settings and this time in the output device we're going to select ASIO for All. So then we can open the control panel and in the ASIO for All panel here we can select the output that we want to use. So for me that will be this Realtek high definition audio. Once that's done we can close this panel and we'll then be able to hear audio in Doubler 2. Remember that if you want to switch back to using audio in your door then you have to change the output device here to none again. If you want to keep your DAW open and switch between audio, we can make sure that the output is turned off in the ASIO control panel of whatever app you're not wanting to hear audio from. If for any reason this is not working, you may need to click the output off and back on again after the relevant app is closed to double check. But I'll just show you an example of this. So if I select ASIO for all here in Doubler 2, now say I want to hear audio in Doubler 2. So first of all, we have our output selected in Doubler. And then in Ableton here, I can go into our hardware setup and you'll see that it's actually already not accepted. So if I turn this off, we'll now then just have audio in Doubler 2. If I want to then turn that the other way around, I can open the control panel in Doubler, turn off our output here, and then back in Ableton, I can now turn on the output here. But once our audio is configured to our preferred output, Doubler is now ready to use. So now we're going to take a look at calibrating a mic without an audio interface. So for example, I have this Blue Yeti here, which plugs directly to our computer via USB. Or the setup is for if you have an audio interface that requires you to use ASIO for all. So it's important to note that this is not the recommended setup for using Doubler 2, and there's a chance that you're going to have a poor experience. We strongly recommend using either an audio interface that comes with its own dedicated ASIO drivers, or using the Doubler USB mic. Without either of those, in order to use your mic as an input and get low latency in both your DAW and Doubler 2, then you'll need to use ASIO for All. Windows own audio drivers can't handle low latency performance, so ASIO for All is a free driver that we can use in place of this. It's worth noting that although ASIO for All will work, there are some extra steps required to get it set up correctly, and it will also limit audio output to one application at a time. But if you need, you can find our other video dedicated to how to set up and download ASIO for All over on our Learn Doubler page. But once we do have ASIO for All installed, we can begin the calibration process. So in the first step of the calibration process, we can select the input we want to use for Doubler. So we're going to select ASIO for All and then open the control panel to make sure it's configured correctly. 
So here in the ASIO for all panel that opens up, this is where we can select our inputs and outputs. We want to make sure that our mic is set to on and it's only set as an input. And likewise, we want to make sure our output is on and that it's only selected as an output and there are no other additional inputs turned on. So if you can't see the drop down menu here, you can open the advanced view by clicking this cog in the bottom right. And here, like I said, we've got our Yeti microphone and we only have in turned on. And below that, we have our Realtek high definition audio with only the output selected and the mic input turned off. Also in this control panel, if your buffer size isn't at 128 samples, you can drag this blue bar until it's set at 128. So we can now close the ASIO panel and we can see on the level meter on the right that we're getting input as we're talking and we can now hit continue to go to the next step in the calibration process. So in this step we're going to be adjusting the gain and we want to make sure that when we're singing into the mic the input falls within the blue area. If it's too loud or too quiet we're going to need to adjust the gain. So if you're using an audio interface that requires you to use ASIO for all you can adjust the gain on the interface directly or if you're using a USB mic, most will have a gain knob on the mic itself and you can adjust this until the level is right. So I'm just going to sing into the mic, adjust the gain on the Blue Yeti until we fall into that blue area. So once that's done, we can move to the final step where we'll hold some notes in the area of the pitch wheel until the bar is full. Da, da. Da, da, da. So after that, our mic is now successfully calibrated. So now that our mic's calibrated, we can open up a profile, and at the bottom here, you'll see an option for inbuilt audio. So doubler two is the option to use inbuilt audio to hear sounds in the app itself. However, due to the way that Windows roots audio and ASIO for All set up, only one program can use ASIO for All as an output at a time. So that means we can either hear audio from our DOW or Doubler 2, but not both at the same time. However, they can be switched around based on what you want to hear audio from. So if we don't want to hear audio in Doubler 2 and we only want audio from our DOW, then we first want to head to the audio device settings in the top right. From here, we want to open the ASIO for All control panel and we want to make sure that our output is turned off in Doubler 2. So here I'm going to select off, and that means we only have our Yeti mic selected as the input. So once that's done, we can close this control panel and now head over to our DAW. So I've got Ableton opened up here. Head to the audio preferences, and now we're going to open up the ASIO for all panel within our DAW. So I'm going to hit hardware setup, and now I can turn Realtek high definition audio on in here. So now we'll only hear audio in our DAW because we have the output in ASIO full only in one of our apps. If we only want to hear audio in W2 and not our DAW, then we can just reverse this. So whilst I'm here in Ableton, now I'm going to turn the output off, close our ASIO panel, and then back in Doubler, we're going to go to the audio device settings again, open up our control panel, and now we can turn this back to on. If for any reason this isn't working, you may need to click the output off and back on again just to make sure that the relevant app has registered this. But once our audio is configured to our preferred output, Doubler is now ready to use. So that's an overview of calibrating your mic on Windows with a few different setups, but you can find some more in-depth guides and tutorials over on our Learn Doubler page.